I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we go on the Crocker House Museum Cemetery Tour. We visit the Whitney's third floor ghost bar, and then we get inspired at the Charles H. Wright Museum, so stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. looking for a really unique tour, then we've got just the thing for you. It's here in Mount Clemens and it's the Crocker House Museum Cemetery Walk. Now the day starts out with a funeral tea, then you head over to the Crocker House Museum, you get to tour an actual wake there. Then you end up here at the Clinton Grove Cemetery where they've got actors portraying the dearly departed. Now this is not a scary event, it's simply a fascinating one. To me, this is a really unique concept, a cemetery walk. It is, uh, perhaps it sounds strange, but you wouldn't believe the response we have to this. And why? Because it's the most fun you could ever have of learning local history. It's brought to life. So the tour starts out with a funeral tea? Yep, the funeral tea, all the foods are reminiscent of food served at wakes of various cultures. So then after the funeral tea, the first stop is the Crocker House Museum? Yep, you'd come to the Crocker House. The Crocker House is set for a wake to the 1880s. So you walk in the door, it looks like a house of that era, what you would expect for a wake. From the Crocker House Museum, mm -hmm. they go to the cemetery with now, a guide. The what's the cemetery where they go to? The, the cemetery is Clinton Grove Cemetery. And we do encourage families to bring their kids because it takes the fear out of the cemetery. And it, it really shows them that the cemetery is a place of history. It's a place of art. Mm -hmm. I really think it's a good experience for kids. Now the first part of the cemetery walk is optional, but if you opt for it, it includes a funeral tea, which is served here at the Presbyterian Church, just down the road from the Crocker House Museum. This was your invitation to awake. It's a molasses caraway biscuit. It has the initial of the deceased inscribed into it. And the dark grapes were favored because of the purple color. And um, this is one of the colors of mourning. So this is an 1860s dress here, solid black. This fabric, the panels on it is, is called crepe. It's a, it's a crinkled silk. And this was referred to as the fabric of woe. <laughs> so after the funeral tea, the first stop is the Crocker House Museum. And we are going to head inside and listen to Kim talk about some of the Victorian era wake customs. You're in the formal parlor now, and the formal parlor is set as you would have seen it in the 1880s, really in most of the Victorian era, even well after the turn of the century, when funerals were done in the home. This I replicated from an actual obituary from the 1860s. Sending flowers, you were doing a favor to mask odor. This also represented their belief in the afterlife. So even the dollhouse is decorated like a for it's a wake? In, in mourning, absolutely. They would have the wreath on the front door and the bunting oh, all around the home. Right and there here. is a little coffin inside because they are having a wake. Just coming here for a visit any time of the year, you can see they've really paid attention to detail in recreating a house from the 18, late 1800s. And as part of the tour, you also can come downstairs and get some cider and donuts. I'm going to enjoy this before I head out to the cemetery. Well, so Roxy, we've taken the bus from the Crocker House Museum. We've ended up here at the Clinton Grove Cemetery. Now right. what happens? Well, then we take the group and we go to several different stations. And at each plot, 
the dead people come alive. Wow. And, yeah, and they speak and they tell us all about themselves and about Mount Clemens and about the area and what happened in their lives. And it is so interesting. You learn so much. I mean, I've learned so much about the Bath City. Hi, I was Chief Michael Smith, and this was our 1923 Ernst Fox Fire Engine. I'm George Crocker from the Crocker House, and these are my three wives. Yes, I'm Cecilia Tarleton Crocker. I'm Harriet Steele Crocker. And I'm Catherine Lee Dickinson Crocker. We've got a Frenchman here who became a village trustee of Mount Clemens. Wee oui, wee, oui, here he goes. <laughs> Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. 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 Uh, Je nomme Charles Mosier. My name is Charles Mosier. As you may have surmised, I was born in France, moved to Mount Clemens. Then in 1859, I became a village trustee. In the January of 1865, the Mount Clemens Salt Company was formed, and I bought 5% of the company stock. Nothing bad so here we are with you. the sheriff of Mount Clemens. I heard he was pretty corrupt, but we're about to hear I his story right now. A drop of water would make you feel better. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you all here. Good afternoon. Uh, how many of you folks are from Macomb County here? Well, that's more than it was back when I was sheriff in 1921 and 22. Thousands and thousands of people came here. The state in the dozens and dozens of, of boarding houses. Can you imagine a 500 room hotel? right here in Mount Clemens. I believe that you need to be accommodating. You want these paying guests to stay here and spend a lot of money, you have to provide for them. And I figure if you relax the law just a little bit, as long as no one gets hurt, everybody wins. Remember, the Crocker House Museum Cemetery Walk only happens once a year. It's the first Saturday of every October. Reservations fill up quick and it's definitely something to mark your calendars for. restaurant in downtown Detroit. It's an elegant restaurant known for special occasions. You get dressed up to come here. But up on the third level, they have a special place called the Ghost Bar. We're going to do a little investigating to find out why they call it the Ghost Bar. So come on. Going up there. Well, here we are on the first floor of the Whitney. It's very beautiful. This is where you have your dining experience, but we're headed upstairs to the third level, the Ghost Bar. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm coming up to the second level, and I see how all this ornateness can line, kind of lend itself to a spooky feel, like, like for instance, the claw here on the light fixture. And I don't know if I'd want to be here alone at night, but I'm going to go keep going. Now, one of my favorite parts about dining at the Whitney is that you get to walk around the second floor. You're just free to wander. They've got all these little secret side rooms. You can look at all the ornateness and, of course, the piano. Stories are that this piano has been heard to play on its own. And, of course, it's underneath this picture of this little boy who stares at you no matter where you go. Look, at, I'm moving here. I'm moving here. His eyes are following me. I don't know. I'm getting goosebumps just, just looking at it. <laughs> Well, here I am heading up to the third floor, and I hear the piano music going, and I know confidently it's from the first floor, not the second floor. Cross my fingers. Oh, and it's beautiful. This can't be haunted. It's too pretty to be haunted. Well, there have been rumors of ghosts. Uh, there's been, uh, there was a knife incident in which a knife fell uh, off the third floor staircase and landed straight up into a cutting board three floors down. There was nobody in the third floor. There was an old manager who claims that he spent a good 15 minutes chasing and walking, following an individual around uh, after he had already closed and locked up and thought the person was trying to sneak into the building and to no avail never found anybody and finally gave up. Mm. Um, there have been pictures with spooky things popping up. There was a woman that was taking a picture of the second floor to show okay. her daughter who was planning on having a wedding here. Um, and there were some ghostly images that came up on the picture really? that, um, of individuals that were not present at the time the picture was taken. You do have paranormal dinners every we so do, often, right? We do have paranormal dinners that we okay. do every so often where there is a tour of the uh, facility. This is a Whitney Hour special. Or this just is a this is this is a Whitney Ghost Bar special. Whitney. This is our flaming seafood tower. We have split lobster tails and flaming sambuca shrimp. Uh, on the second, we have mussels there, and then on the bottom, we have split king crab legs along with shrimp cocktail. That is the sambuca. And that is our flaming seafood tower. Wow, impressive. Little more than I could take. Pity for pity say. Sometimes it kept me away. So a little less spooky out here, actually quite inviting. Yes, yes, <laughs> a little more uh a little more open, a little mm -hmm. more green, uh, you know, very uh, Michigan-y, if you will. Uh, we're going to have the garden out here. We're going to have live music seven days a week, and uh, we're going to run different dinner specials every night. Nice. We've been doing garden parties for uh, 20 years now, so boiling some lobsters right now as oh. we speak. Hey, well, Tony, thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much for coming out. Yeah, and I think I'm going to sneak back in and, dare I, wander the Whitney alone? Hey, <laughs> I wouldn't go alone, but, you know, hey, you're more than welcome to wander. <laughs> I'm going to. What are you making here? We got a uh, marinated chicken breast right now, and we're going to put a little barbecue sauce on it for our barbecue chicken. Okay, and you get that nice grilled flavor because it's all here on open flame. Exactly. <laughs> all right, I'll let you do it. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> well, how much fun you get to be outside. <laughs> I know, my favorite. And so what, what would you recommend to somebody coming to the garden bar? Well, on a day like today, uh -huh. when it's a little warmer out and you might need something to cool down and relax with, my yeah. personal favorite is going to definitely be the cucumber uh, Valentine martini drink. Cucumber Valentine martini. That sounds yeah. yummy. And it's not necessarily a traditional martini. It's more of a cocktail. Mm -hmm. But uh, so first what I do is I take a scoop of our cucumber puree Ooh. that we make mm -hmm. using the finest of cucumbers. And then we use the finest of vodkas, my personal favorite, Valentine made in uh, Ferndale, Ooh, right okay. down the okay. road. Oh, yeah. yeah. A little pour here. Oh, here we go. Here's right. our drink. So, and let me throw one more of these. Wait a minute, so what did you add? Pretty. What did you add to it? That was just a slice of cucumber. Oh, a slice of cucumber and a little and club a soda. And a little bit of club soda. Okay. And, and uh, let me know what you think about okay. that. 
Oh, that's nice and refreshing. Oh, thank you. It yeah. is. Oh, I see why it's your favorite. Yeah, yeah. very <laughs> nice. You know, I love cucumber water too, so it's a nice spin on that. Right. And we've been it. thinking about taking our vodka nice. and maybe chopping up some cucumbers yeah. and letting oh, it sit in there because yeah. that lends really, really light, wonderful cucumber flavor to the vodka. Okay, I'll be back for that. I'll I'll be here. I'll see you then. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yep. So what's a trip to the ghost bar without their signature drink, the ghost martini? Now you're mixing this up for me, and I know you don't have any particular ghost stories yourself, but let me ask you this. Would you be here alone by yourself at night? Yeah. I you am would? All the time. Really? <laughs> all by yourself? Yeah. Nobody else in the house? And no well, story? Well, see? Be one person uh. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. Very haunting. Yeah. I love the color. Can I drink it right yes. now while it's us? I think it is strong. Mmm. Oh, it's fun to drink. It's nice and citrusy. It's, yeah. And it's so much fun. Well, there you have it. The ghost martini at the ghost bar only in the day. Thanks, Beverly. Welcome. There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit this month, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. Head to Shane Park for the funky and unique Universe Soul Circus, and Plymouth welcomes Autumn with their Fall Festival. Visit Rochester's Art and Apples Festival, then head to the Deli in the Alley Party for good eats and music. Greenfield Village revs up for the Old Car Festival, then see the newest water trends at the Boating and Outdoor Festival. Step back in time at the Northville Victorian Festival, and Detroit Restaurant Week is back with Discount Dining. Explore historic Detroit sites on two wheels, then keep a lookout for the city's creative side at the Design Festival. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. I'm at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, which is the world's largest institution dedicated to the African American experience. And when you come in up the steps, you're greeted by this magnificent rotunda behind me, which creates this really unique acoustic echoey sound. From there, you go on up the steps to their permanent exhibit, And Still We Rise, which is a journey through the African American experience of culture and history that spans all the way from the slave trade days on through the current 21st century. They also have an extremely large temporary exhibit that rotates throughout the year, probably about three or four different per year. But we are here to see their latest permanent exhibit, Inspiring Minds, which challenges everyone to come up with their own great invention. It really is for all ages. Yeah. But we have a lot of things in here for small children that we don't have in other areas of the museum. We have a lot of things that you can touch, which is awesome because right. in a history museum there's often not a lot of things you can touch and yeah. engage with. Mm -hmm. And so the space is really designed to learn history, to learn science, but also to engage and play. The highlight of the exhibition space is the multimedia touch wall. Wow. What we're looking at here is the African American timeline. And there are two components to the timeline. Okay. The first one is the top bar which gives some facts about African-American history through the years, and so this is what's happening in 1968. Right. It's designed to give some context, because the stars are actually about specific African-American scientists and inventors. Oh. And so the idea is that when you're learning about the mm -hmm. scientists and inventors, mm -hmm. and you don't know what was happening in 1967, you can look at the timeline at the top to get some kind of context about what was going on yeah. in American history and world history that was important. And so we can go from the African American timeline to another content area on marine life. Wow. And the bubbles are all touchable. Oh. And neat. so when a child comes up and they touch one of the bubbles, you get a fact about the ocean. It might be about the ancient ocean, it might be about the ocean now. Mm -hmm. And within each of the bubbles there's actually an activity that a child can do. So this is a puzzle. Some of them are quiz questions, some of them are matching up 
you know, a fish or something that is in the ocean. So Jennifer, I would also think this would be really good for school groups to come in and utilize this space. It is. We have a lot of school groups that come in and when they get here we have an educator that's in the space mm -hmm. that shows them how the room operates and then they yeah. go and do a workshop that kind of gets their creative juices flowing. Yeah, it kind of hits at another angle. So they get to do something with their hands, they, mm -hmm. they get to create something, express themselves in a way. And so we actually have a lot of different workshops yeah. that a school can pick from. What do you think about this whole big screen thing? Uh, I think it's good because we get to like learn about the stuff that we really didn't know. So I learned about it. I didn't even know who it was. So I'm just reading it and I'm finding out who this is. And isn't it inspiring you to want to do something inventive? Yes. All right, high five to that. <laughs>
Well, I just did it. How easy is that? How fun. And then you can play back, see how you did. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Very cool exhibit. Definitely worth coming to. Lots of great hands-on stuff for the kids to enjoy and the adults, too. I've made part of history here at the African American Museum. <laughs>